Hello everyone, welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. So for part two of this week's update video, we're going to talk about what uh, Mark and Mike have been up to. So Mark has been um, building a new uh, a new stone mine. So I don't know if you remember from the previous videos, but we had a bit of a we had a bit of an issue where um, we were running very very low on stone because we we're we we're just chewing through massive massive quantities of it over uh, here. Yes, yeah, so it was all being brought in here, massive massive quantities being passed out, being turned into stone bricks. Great, passed down here. Here, turned into sand to be turned into glass and silica and quartz to be turned into silicon. So we were getting through massive quantities of it, and we had a we had almost no supply of it available. So we had the little trickle of it that was coming out of the uh, the core mining along here, which is a slightly bigger trickle than it used to be, but it's still I mean that's still a trickle if we're being honest, isn't it? There's not very much coming out here. Uh, so we, did, we didn't have anything like enough coming through here, and we were really really short of stone mines. We had. A little one down. Where was it? I can't even remember. Maybe it was. Over, oh yeah, we had a little one over here that, as you can see, is producing stone. It's basically basically a dribble of stone, and there's only 560,000 there. I think there was another tiny stone. Yeah, there's another tiny stone patch up here that we spotted that wasn't really worth wasn't really worth it. It's only it's, it's almost not worth going out and, and setting up a mine just for a mere 734,000. So we've been going. Oh no, what are we going to do? And we eventually spotted that there's actually some um, massive part stone patches out here. Five million there, four million there. It was, bit, it was a bit more than four million. We've uh, plundered some of that. And another almost six million up there. So uh, that's why Mike has basically spent the last two weeks fighting every single biter from about here to well he's so far he's got to he's, he's got to here and across to here so we put in a, we put in a what we're referring to as a, um, a notification wall um, and they're called notification walls because we don't really expect them to stop any sort of concert, concerted biter attack but if the biters do try to come through this way at least we'll get an alert popping up in the uh, in the in the um, thing down here to tell us that the wall has been damaged and we'll be able to see hopefully be able to see them coming through with the radars and there's a little bit of defense so, you know if you get sort of one or two biters coming through then there's there are there are some laser turrets on here so if it's just sort of a few little ones then we'll probably it'll probably be enough to stop them before they bite through eat through too much of the wall so yes, a notification wall as opposed to a proper defensive wall. Uh, that will be will be getting upgraded at some point in the not too distant future. But for now, it'll it's just there as is. So I don't know whether Mike is planning to push a little bit further and claim this. I'm going to call it an island because it almost is. Um, and then we'd only need two little walls across there and there. Or whether we're going to go for a slightly bigger wall across there. To be honest, at this stage, I think we've probably gained enough space that we're going to have enough room for the entire rest of the game because. We're not, I doubt it. Doubt if we're going to do that much more large-scale expansion on Norvis. And we've got all this space across the top here and, and across here for more towns as, as and when we need them. So if he wants to build a wall across there, I think I'd be completely happy with that. It's not like there aren't even any resources worth gathering on this island down here. But yes, so we were very, very short of stone. Getting back to getting back to five minutes in, back to the beginning of the video. Okay, it's not quite five minutes in, but you know, near enough. Um, getting back to the beginning of the video. Yes, we've got these these stone outposts uh, or stone patches out here that we wanted to go out and and start mining. So Mark has come out here. He's built this one now that now that Mike has freed up freed up the space for it. And these are mining drills two, mining drill twos. So they have a slightly bigger mining area so they can pull up ore that's slightly further away from them and they work significantly faster 50 percent faster and they only produce slightly more pollution so they actually produce less pollution per ore dug up than the uh, than the normal mining drills so what he's done here and the reason this looks like such a mess it's not a mess it's an efficiency uh, what we've got because we because the long because the red underground belts in crastorio go quite a long way it appears to be well, it's managing eight. Maybe it can manage more than that. I don't know. So there's quite a long underground available, amount available there. I think it's probably eight total. And this means that we're, we're able to get three stacks of belts, all fe three stacks of miners, all at slight offsets, all feeding onto, the, on, onto in, in separate belts. Now, at the moment, these are then all being merged onto a single belt on the output here, which means it's sort of... I'm not going to call it say it's pointless, but it doesn't. But we do have a... Um, but if we, just had, if we just had one single belt coming through here, that would work almost as well. But that's sort of not the point. The point is we could then have significantly more belts coming out here. So we could we could use three to two balancers all the way along here, and then feed into two two warehouses and split them, and then split them off onto the, into the two um, two sides of the train over here, and have some sort of cunning um, circuitry to make sure that it's it's kept balanced. But there are yeah, so there's there's all kinds of things we could do in, in, around here to keep to make the um, make the system produce the ore, or in this case the stone, significantly more quickly. Now at the moment that's not necessary. We're producing. Umpteen. How many? How many are we? Between one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. We've got eight full red belts being fed in here, and only four being fed out. So we are massively overproducing. But in the future, this sort of this sort of level could be could become very very useful. Just being able to pull ore out of a out of a patch this quickly. So as you can see, we've got various trains stacked up here, ready to all ready to fill up. In fact, let's send this one off to somewhere. Um, let's just get it out of the station, then tell it. To Let's get it out of the station and then send it back to the stone mine. Right. So now we'll see this train will swing around back here, back round, back round here like this, and we'll be able to see the sort of the, the full power of this battle station swing into action. <laughs> so there we go. As you can see, it, it's, it's loading out of these as fast as it can. We've got the um, we've got the 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 stone pouring through from here and then pouring out from all of these. And I mean, this isn't even this this isn't really running it at full speed. The, the, you can see only a few of the mining drills are bothered to kick in, um, but we are now able to we are able to, as you can see to produce the stone nice and quickly. So this is just this is this is great. This is going to produce this is going to hopefully fix all of our stone problems, especially when we get another one of them here and another one up here. I don't think we're going to need them for throughput, but we are probably going to need them for the sheer quantity of stone that we're going to get through because you do seem to get through a lot of stone in um, in space exploration because everything requires massive quantities of glass. Fortunately, as I discovered in, in my 0.5 playthrough, and I'm sort of assuming until proven wrong that it's still the case, uh, fortunately, all of the processing of the exotic ores produces quite a lot of stone as well, and so all of that can be turned into glass, and you just end up shipping glass everywhere, and it's a bit of a nonsense, but it does mean you, you've got, yeah, you, you, can, you can keep your glass supplies up and running reasonably well. <laughs> reasonably. So yes, as I say, Mike has cleared out all this sort of area. Um, I, I think he died a few. He died a few more times. Um, an additional four times, which for Mike isn't bad. Um, so he's, he's doing doing fairly well. He secured up this area. Made the, he built the stations around here for for Mark's mine. Um, he's been doing some real world biter fighting as well. Apparently, he managed to catch a daddy long legs that been annoying him for several hours. Um, that seems to be real world rather than in game though. So he probably didn't get didn't get to use a railgun for it. Although you never know. He's also been into the. Um, uh, what do you call it over here? The um, what, what's this? The smeltery area, and he's upgraded all of the belts involved in stone anythinginging. Um, or at least beyond. All the belts are beyond here, presumably, to red belts. He says, zooming in to try and tell. No, these are still yellow belts. Okay, it's all of the sorry, all of the belts involving sand have been upgraded to red belts. So we've now got because when you when you pulverize stone, you get uh, for every three stone that go in, you get about. Uh, more than twice as much sand, sand coming out. So you get seven, seven or eight that sand. So it's it's all, but about to about two and a half times as much. So there's a lot a lot of extra pressure, should we say, on the belts. So you need you need belts that are more than twice as fast. So we've got sand coming through here as fast as we possibly can, then being shipped back out again. And as you can see, for making the quartz and making the glass, the sand it, the sand production rate is currently a massive bottleneck for this. So this is one of his next project projects is going to be to upgrade this to to, to destroy even more stone. So it's a good thing we've got a good supply of it now. Um, and then we'll be yeah we'll be able to make more quartz, so we'll be able to make more silicon, and we'll be able to make more glass. Because if you look down here, these are basically the only things that we're still a bit short of. There's there's less than a train's worth in here. Um, a tra a trains come in anyway, so this is now going to empty straight into the train like this, um, without without actually being able to fill the train up. There's ooh, almost a train's worth in in, in these in, in these actually. So this train is going to is going to fill up eventually. Glass is quite dense, so you can get you can get a lot of it into a train. But eventually this 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 train will fill up. But it's still we don't have an enormous amount of glass being produced. It does seem to be a bit, a bit of a bottleneck. And over here this, the the um, the silicon is even more of a bottleneck because that's used to, if for making the massive massive quantities of red and blue circuits we've been we've been seeing. So this yes this needs an upgrade. That is on his to, his to do list though. So at some point he'll, he'll be doing that. And also he started he started improving the uh, steel smeltery. Um, and by improve, improving it currently appears to mean that he's just pulled out all of the um, all of the old steel furnaces that were making the iron. So what he's decided to do is reckon that this iron system over here is good enough, and it is at the moment. These all these warehouses are full, so we have plenty of iron. So he's splitting it off here, sending instead of sending the iron ore all the way along here to be turned into iron, he's um, because that would require in order to upgrade to that he'd need to put in another set of um, enrichment and then another set of iron furnaces and that would be an enormous amount of space here so what is instead he's just going to bring the iron along here feed it and feed it up here into these steel machines we've still got the um, machines over here making the coke um, to, to keep us all um, uh, uh, keep us all sharp and up here we've got the expanded greenhouses that I talked about last week in order to make sure that we always have enough wood to make the coke so this now these belts basically as far as it 
by the looks of it, these belts just need to be fed into the bottom of here. So I'm surprised he didn't just finish that off because I don't think it would have taken that long. But maybe he ran out of belts or was busy dealing with the daddy long legs or something. I, I, I don't know. But steel is definitely a thing we need a lot of. As you can see, there's absolutely none in the station. There's a, ne a nearly full train's worth, actually. So this train probably could be sent off okay three quarter three quarter full trains worth it's not it's not enough basically so we need we need a lot more steel production so we're going to have to see what how, how this gets on maybe fill all this up with productivity modules and a lot more furnaces i, I don't know we'll leave that up to mike though because that seems to be his um that, that that's a job for him to deal with at the moment <laughs> So I got a little bit distracted on the way through talking talking about what uh, Mark had been doing and started talking about what Mike had been doing. Um, I can tell the difference between their names, I promise, um, even if I get it wrong occasionally. So um, Mark has also been doing a little bits of fixing here and there. So there was there was a problem with the red circuits on the bus. I don't remember what that was. Let's have a look at my to-do list. Oh, uh, it was probably yes. I think it was the old the traditional problem where the red circuits aren't weren't getting loaded into here properly because there was another box somewhere with red circuits in. So it was just not feeding them through. So Mark has fixed that, and I think there were a couple of other similar sort of bus type things that needed doing so i imagine he's probably sorted those out uh <laughs> the way this game tends to work is I'll, I'll i'll make these videos um between sessions and as i go through i tend to look at things a little bit more closely than i do when i'm playing normally because i'm trying to talk about them and explain what has been done and it's just i look at them again with a fresh set of eyes so i'll often notice if things aren't working like there's a couple of bus belts coming in here that don't have anything in them i think that's probably okay though because these will be bat yeah batteries and heat shield tiles so those aren't actually being made in towns yet so those belts being emptied is actually fine uh, but otherwise yeah I can have a, I can skim across this scan across the bus and say yes everything otherwise looks pretty good so things are probably okay so I'll make a list of all the things I find in the uh, while I'm recording the episode and then at the start of the, uh, the start of the next stream I'll go well okay here, here are the things I'm going to do before I carry on building and while I'm doing the first one uh, Mark tends to scuttle around and get every single other one done in a very, sort of very very quick way in fact if, if I'm not careful he'll, he'll go through and get half of the list done while I'm still saying hello to everybody on the stream so that's very very useful for me um, it just means all of the problems get sorted out very very conveniently and we can just get on with the uh, get on with the with the uh, the main business of the next episode or the next stream so that yeah so that's great um, he then went in and he improved the uh, copper smelting again because there wasn't enough there still wasn't enough i mean i said there wasn't enough how are we doing here these okay these warehouses are filling up now so they're not full but they are they are they have significantly more than a train's worth in them and this train is not going anywhere despite it being full so we've solved well, I won't say we've solved the copper problem, but we have we've got to the point now where there is enough copper in the system that things are generally happy, and that is probably at least at least partly because you'll you'll notice that uh, this is this was the um, the smelting a smelting area that uh, Mike built as, as sort of a a proof of concept and a first a first generation no a second generation one because the, the first generation was just using the furnaces. Now we're doing enrichment as well, so this is a second generation one. Mark has then come along and upgraded it to a uh, two point, a generation 2.5 where he basically decided there was no point in having this gap and the balancer in the middle and just had the belts go straight through which meant you could fit in an extra one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows of furnaces along here and because the rate the um, the enrichment enriched stuff is coming out essentially it's kind of coming out faster than the the, the smelters were it, it, these, these machines instead of taking 20 to make 15 instead of taking 20 ore to make 15 um copper they now take five enriched to make to make five copper so in order to deal with a full belt in you need more machines basically so so we so he was able to extend this downwards to get a bit of extra processing available there and then as the version 2.6 should we say um he's also extended it off to the right a bit so he's filled in there was there was a bit of a gap here or possibly yeah, looking at where the belts go, the gap must have been over on this side. So we've got a couple of extra rows in here of copper now as well. So we're making it even faster than we were, um, and it's all getting crammed onto the onto these belts coming down here, straight into the top of the um, warehouse here. Which this one isn't building up a supply at all because it's then feeding it out. It's got six belts coming in, which aren't quite full, and then eight belts going out, which may or may not be full. But they are being kept balanced by the uh, by the, well, the cable system across here, which says don't put, don't output unless there's enough in here to put some more onto every single belt. Which is why we're getting this slightly stuttery effect with the lights flashing like Christmas over here. Um, but it does mean that that now balances the amount coming out and puts the same amount into each of these warehouses. Whereas before, if, you, if we didn't have, when we didn't have the circuit condition, the uh, the um, the loaders would play favoritism, should we say? And so maybe this one would work constantly, and then the rest of them would be starved, or maybe it'd be this one that worked constantly. I think it might be the one that gets put down first, but I or possibly last. I don't really know. But whatever it was, there was a system there that didn't work. So, but now with the uh, with the circuit conditions across here, it now works, and 
we get an even amount flowing out. So we've got about 399 stacks in each one. Um, okay, it's not quite the same, but then there's a little bit on the on the belt down here, sort of being buffered. So maybe maybe if we if we if this stopped, maybe by the time it's all filtered through, they'd be about balanced. It doesn't really matter as long as there's as long as there's a reasonably good a reasonable level of balance, it's absolutely fine. Okay, that wall I was talking about earlier that goes across here, the early warning wall, apparently was a, was a was a mark construction. I don't think I, I don't think I said who built it. I just said that it had been built. So yes, that is that is a, a, a mark system. There's also another one of those early warning walls down here. I think I talked about this in the last video. So as I say, they're they're not designed to stop the biters, uh, not designed to stop a big wave of biters because there's just one laser turret uh, defending. Well, actually, anywhere the biters run up, there'll probably be two laser turrets. Ha! Actually, there'll be two laser turrets if they attack the wall in a random place. But if they run towards a turret, which is what they tend to do. We'll probably find there's only actually one turret defending because if you look in front of the next turret across you'll see that actually the the um the, the range of this turret doesn't quite reach that one so but never mind as i say these are sacrificial they're just to give us a, just to give us a warning so somebody can head over there and go no stop it and clear up and, and clear clear the area up at some point we'll upgrade them to proper walls but in general we're trying not to need the walls particularly because if you look we, yes we've got a, we've got a clump of pollution down here but we've been using the um, the filters everywhere so you, you'll have noticed that stone mine we've just built yes there is a load of pollution coming out from it but it's all being stopped here by this wall of filters all the way around the outside of it so we have yes we have a mine here but it's clean it's not or it's not it's not emitting any pollution outside it outside its area so in theory these walls only need to deal with an occasional curious biter who wanders over to see what's going on they don't need to deal with the the big waves of biters that come running in due to due to pollution now at some point in the not too distant future well we are now researching artillery <laughs> so in a thousand researches time um all of this is going to change when the um, when the artillery attacks because we're going to then drop an artillery round into the middle of this nest and then every biter in this whole area is going to charge the wall at once. Um, by then, we, well, we've got uranium ammo research. Ho hopefully by then we'll have built some and we'll be able to go out there and slap down much better defences in order to protect it. Maybe we'll put in uranium uh, to turrets. Maybe we'll put in multiple rows of um, lasers. However we do it, Hopefully it'll be enough to, sort of to keep us safe and, and to protect everything from, from, the, uh, from the rage caused by, the, by usage of artillery. I do also find these little patches of pollution in the, on the railways ent entertaining. So this is clearly where a train has been accelerating hard um, and it's just polluted the, the, by the railway a little bit. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, I've, I, as I think I said last time I spotted this, I've not really thought about the pollution generated by trains as being a thing before. So I've no idea whether that's in vanilla and I've just never noticed it or whether it's something that's been added in re recently. Who knows? Uh, oh, uh, Mark has also put in a new copper mine, presumably this one. Yes, this is this is a new Mark style mine. So as you can see here, we've got right. So we've got a lot more drills running. Um, once again, we're they're comp he's compacting three belts down onto a single one, so you don't really gain all that much from the staggered system. But it looks cool and complicated, so we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll appreciate that anyway. Um, and we're and these belts aren't full, so we are we're basically pulling out the copper as fast as we can. But we know how much copper we get through. There is. Okay, there is a lot of copper available here, which is why there's two trains waiting to pick some of it up. That's interesting, because um, that is now, presumably, that is the closest copper mine to the smeltery, based on how trains work. Because um, the other ones are, let's turn pollution back off again so I can see what's going on. The other ones are over here, and this one um, doesn't have a full train's worth. And this one down here... Um, Oh, this one does have a full train's worth, but is miles away, so the trains are going to this one by preference. I'm, I'm okay with that. I don't know why the train stopped. Oh, the destination's full. Okay, that's fine. Um, the stacker here... Yeah, that's going to cause problems, I think. I'm trying to spot the... Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. That signal does appear to be green. All right. There, oh, that, that signal is just far enough in that we've got a two-train stacker on the way into the station. Okay. All right, I'll, um, I'll allow that. It do, it's, it's been squeezed in in such a way that it does work. <laughs> okay, so between them, we've got the three copper mines now. They're all running flat out, and they're not able to produce the copper. Each Any individual mine is not able to produce copper as quickly as required. But between them, it seems like they probably are, because this one down here has uh, 64,000. That's what that's... Wow, that's like four trains worth looking at these, uh, looking at these warehouses. And there's a lot more... Or in this one for some reason. Ah, so this is what I was talking about about the um, the ins the uh, loaders having favoritism. If you look, you notice that this belt and this belt have a lot more on them than um, than this one and this one do. These two are they look full to me. Uh, it's kind of hard to eyeball, but I think they're full. Whereas these two are not. 
So that means over here, this warehouse has 508, 508 stacks. This one has only 172. This one has 477. This one only has 175. So that's kind of problematic. What we... Sh I mean, it's, a, it's a bit late to fix it now. We could put in a balancer across... A, a, so the, the, uh, the belt controls across here to make it run properly. Or we could just wait for that one and this one to fill up. <clears throat> and then that'll rebalance it. Because now this one's stopped, we've got a bit more going out on all three of the other ones. So this one will fill up fairly soon. And then all of it will go out onto these two. So maybe it'll be okay... It's a bit problematic and could do with fixing, so I'll put that on the to-do list as well, and probably Mark will go over there and go, what is this? Who made this? Why is this Why is this so bad? And make it just generally better and more efficient. He says he's improved the stone smeltery station. Um, I don't know what improved means in this context. Maybe it means he's put in a high, high, high priority and a low priority. Yeah, we've got a high priority and a low priority, so maybe maybe that's what's been done. And the way the way this works is we've got um, the high priority. The idea of a high priority and low priority is we want to make sure we use up resources from funny, funny places that where they're where stuff is produced as an overflow. Like over here, we're producing stone and iron as over as as byproducts of producing the uh, the uranium. So we want the we never want these stations to fill up. So if there's if so we always want the trains to come and pick up from here first by choice and then go off and unload wherever. And um, and then we want them, and then we want them to go off to the iron mines instead, and the iron mines are with a lower priority because those are finite. But there's not, but they're not going to. If they fill up, they're not going to hold anything else up, so they're not going to cause any problems. I talked a bit about how the um, how the prioritization systems work over here, but let's uh, before, but let's have a quick look at it and, and see if we can make any uh, make any sense of it. So we've got the number, the amount of stone being fed out of here, which is about eight, not about nine thousand. That's then negated, so we have an output of minus nine thousand. That's then added on to the amount we would like to have as a maximum in this station, which is sixteen thousand. So that gives us a signal of um, about five thousand. And then, but that slowly rises as the station empties. When that hits, when that hits um, eight, when that hits eight thousand, presumably yes, eight thousand, we divide it by the number of, uh, we divide stone by eight thousand, and that will then tr turn into an L, which goes over to here and sets the priority. So if there is, if there is under eight thousand stone in here, then it will summon another train on the low priority side. The high priority side is exactly the same, except that, except the cutoff is at thirty-two thousand. So if there's less than thirty-two thousand, we'll summon in a high priority train. So as long as we've got a decent amount of stone available, as long as the station has a suitable amount, um, then we'll then we'll always be bringing it in from the high priority side first, and then we, and keeping it at thirty-two thousand ish, between twenty-four and thirty-two thousand. If we, then, but then if it carries on dropping below that because there isn't enough coming from the high priority stations then we'll start to call it in from the low priority stations and top up from the mines as well and at the moment we don't we aren't making enough in the high priority stations for that to be for that to work uh, for, for that for that for any to come through at any decent rate so we're just going to be calling it in from the high, from the low priority stations so eventually this will get down to 8000 there we go it's got below 8000 we've set the um, the train limit here to 1 so this train is now going out to uh, is now on its way over here and is going to drop some off and we'll see this then Hope the theory is that in the time that it takes for this to drop down to um, to zero from the eight, from dipping below eight thousand, that we won't have got through all of the stone that's stored in this warehouse, and we clearly won't because there's twenty five thousand in there. We didn't even empty these ones out. So there we go. We called in a low priority train because we got below the the, the minimum. We got below eight thousand, but if we got below twenty four thousand and there was a high priority train available, then it would have brought some in on on the side as well. So that's how that works. Um, I'll, I'll go over that in a bit more detail if anyone's confused, but I think I've probably covered it, probably covered it well enough, <coughs> hopefully. <laughs> Finally on uh, on Mark's list, he has also, um, now we now have liquid rocket fuel down here, available down here, so we've got, um, we have this area down here in big oil where we're, um, we're doing all of the oil processing and making, and making all of the oil products, so plastic and lube and, um, uh, sulfuric acid and rocket fuel and solid rocket fuel and sulfur we now also have this system down here taking off the uh, solid fuel line and turning it into liquid rocket fuel because we reckon it's going to it makes more sense probably to uh, to ship it around as a liquid rather than as a solid there was a re there was some reasoning behind that i can't remember what it was no nope, i can't remember what it was but probably to centralize stuff and just so we can we can expand here as necessary a bit more easily than if we need to expand somewhere else so we've now got um liquid rocket fuel in a uh, in, in a station up here and available for, for this train. So this means at some point my rocket over here is probably going to lose its solid fuel train station here and have a liquid and be, have this replaced with the liquid fuel train which is going to be bumped dumped straight into this pipe here and, we'll, and, and into the rocket. So we'll, we, won't be, we won't be making the solid rocket fuel on site here anymore. 
Um, I mean, at the moment, it's okay. Although that said, given we need solid rocket fuel in space, we're still going to need we're still actually going to need the drop off station here, which can have a uh, liquid rocket fuel drop off station as well, which seems a little bit overkill. But you know, we'll uh, we'll see how we get on with it. So I think that covers everything everyone's been up to. Um, it's been a it's been a good week. We had we had a lot done, uh, especially with, with going to going to space being the uh, the absolute highlight of it and the the most exciting thing. And lots of then sort of improvement of the um, of the all the uh, logist not logistics the supply systems down here on Norvis as well. So um, it's time to have a look at the death counter. In in all of the expansion, uh, Mike died an additional four times. So well done there. Uh, most of that was to biters and well wants to a spitter. So he's um it's it's, it's the perils of expanding, and which is why there's sort of little little um, Drengen graves all over the place. Uh, Mark also died a couple of times once to a, um, a a worm of some sort, I believe. That's probably this one up here. And I think he also I believe he also died to a train as well. And I don't I wouldn't I don't know where that is, but he got clipped by a cargo wagon and had his face taken off again, which is a bit of a shame. <laughs> it's, Tristan did notice that he's, he's, he's built his um, battery pl production system over here on an ancient German burial ground. So maybe... No, that can't be where, um, where uh, Mark was hit by a train because there's no trains up there. That was probably in an earlier expansion. I, I imagine so yeah that was um un un unfortunate but um hopefully the bat hopefully we won't be getting haunted batteries out of this system but we'll, we'll see how that goes and yes so we've we've had now that brings us up to um a total of 32 uh, deaths from the various natives two from trains and one from radiation poisoning so i think that's going reasonably well it's not quite we're not going full XCOM on the death counts but we're um yeah there's there's quite a lot of them uh, racking up over here, especially especially over in this area <laughs> So what are we going to do next time? Well, next time I'm going to be doing a lot of expansion out up in space, I think. Um, so up here, I want, to, I want to get this to the point where I've got a, um, a bootstrap base up and running so that's producing all of the stuff that I need to expand out. So things like the, um, the various space belts and pipes that we're going to need, lots of um, scaffolding so I can build outwards, and then I'm going to start trying to build a sort of a main bus going out this way, and then start building all the sciences and all of the, and again, move my bootstrap base onto that, um, onto, onto that main bus. I have a cunning plan on how I'm going to get lots and lots of different things delivered up by by rocket and then out onto a bus without ending up with sort of, and, and, and without having to use bots or anything, any other sort of bot 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 like nonsense in order to get to uh, to move the stuff between the various different places on there. Last time I did use bots and it was horrible. They were just crashing all over the place and it was a massive tangle and it was just ugly and I don't want to do that again. So yes, th things are going to be different this time. We're going to have um, we're, I'm going to try and stick with uh, far fewer logistics bots in space. Maybe we'll see. I, I want to, I, I want to not use them at all. Um, Apart from perhaps, for, for, apart from for supplying my, for supplying players, um, but we'll see whether that's re re realistic and reasonable or not. Oh, we've got another coronal mass ejection six hours out. I wonder how big one that, that one's going to be. Let's have a quick look. 2.28 gigawatts, 182 gigajoules. That's over 120 seconds. That sounds about the same as the last one, and I think we reckoned that they're probably they're probably um, all all the same size for a given planet. We're not sure about this, but we we, we have a suspicion. So I'll check that and and put an answer on the screen now. Well, there we go. Now you know whether I'm right or not, and I don't. <laughs> so yes, that's going to be my big my big push is going to be for improving everything up here in space and just getting it getting it going and getting getting the science sciencing and doing everything that we want it to do. So that should be um, that should be good fun. I notice we're not building science packs over here anything like as quickly as we need them. They've all been all the space sciences have been swallowed up, so we're going to need more of that. But that's fine. Uh, this, this this is just a sort of as I say, this is a bootstrap base, so I don't care that it's ugly and bad. <laughs> Um, back down on Norvis, as I say, there's there's um, there's going to be a load of general general assembly going to be going on down here. <coughs> we're going to be uh, probably putting in an artillery to tidy up this area a little bit. Um, we're going we need a heat shield tile um, production facility. We need uh, we need better we need the, the battery system up here finishing off and, and um, activating. We're going to need we're probably going to start thinking about uranium and maybe nuclear power as well. Um, that's going to be somebody else's problem though because I'm in space. The smeltery is going to be finished off with the uh, with the steel being produced again and the up upgrades to the um, uh, to the sand uh, production here. Maybe we'll put in more um, productivity modules. Maybe we won't. We'll see how that goes. We're definitely going to get, need more of these uh, core mining drills. Uh, not core mining drills. Core pulverizing pulverizers. Just just because these are free resources, so we want to use these if we can. Um, so yeah, there's lots of lots of things to do. Um, I'm not sure. Well, we'll let's see. Is, has anyone else said what they want to be doing? Okay. So Tristan has said he, as part of building this area up, he needs to fiddle with the uh, the filters up here to make to well to put this in. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure that's going to work. Oh, I suppose if you put in, if you use oh I see no this is this is a splitter at splitters out. 
Um, there is a there is a couple there are a couple of filters using them though. So ideally we don't want to lose we don't want to lose that completely. But maybe he's just going to put a splitter in there so it goes both ways from here and then runs all the way. Oh, oh okay. This is a right. So what I think is he's going to take them from here because there aren't any filters taking them around here. Okay, that's fine. So he's going to extend this to come to come down here instead of going around the top and then join it in uh, wherever it was over here. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so that 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 that, okay, that can be done. And a little bit of faffing with the with the uranium stuff down here, uh, and just a few little bits of tidying tidying up here and there and everywhere. Um, so yeah, there's lots of lots of little bits to do. Um, I'm sure everyone is going to think of lots more things. They're going to most of it is going to be shouting at me, asking me to get the science sciences up and running faster because they want all of this juicy, exciting stuff up here. Um, I guess that it's, once we've got these, then we're going uh, we're going to then look into um, um, ingot processing, that's pyroflux, pyroflux smelting, and then uh, Mike can have the excitement of ripping down and rebuilding the um, the smeltery area yet again. Um, sorry, Mike. <laughs> um, and I suppose we're going to then be sending off, sending people off to other planets as well, because we're going to need all of the exotic materials for, for science and for future technologies and all of that sort of thing. So we're going to need to discuss and decide how we want to do that, whether that's going to be through delivery cannons, whether we, how we're going to get out there, how everything how everything is going to work. Um, and then start sending people off to other planets to build up mining facilities for beryllium, for holmium, for iridium, for vitamelange, for vulcanite, for cry cryonite, just basically for everything, all of the extra ingredients and things, bits and pieces you need in this game. Uh, they all need to be brought in somewhere, somehow. So there's going to be a lot of work to do to get all of that that up and running. Um, and so yeah, we'll probably each person will probably have their own planet, I guess, and we'll all go off and start to get things working out there. Um, but exactly how we're going to do that, that remains to be decided. So come along and join us next time to find out. And while I'm advertising things, please go and check out our, the stream sponsor. That's trefoil.be. They, um, they're providing their server for the stream, which is very kind of them. And also they're doing one month free if you use the code LawrencePlays on checkout. So go, go over, check them out. There's no, no reason not to because you can get a free month, play around with it, see what you think. And if you don't like it, well, you haven't lost anything, have you? Um, there's also a competition running on their site at the moment for, uh, for October because it's um, Halloween and ooh, spooky. Uh, they've got various hidden spooky things around the site. So if you manage to find all, all of them, I think it's about six or eight or something like that. If you can find all the spooky things on, the, on their site you can be entered in I think you're then entered into a draw in order to try and uh, win an additional three months free and those stack as well so you can get the free month the free month from using the code Lawrence plays and the three free months for, um, for for winning the competition you get a full four months of free free hosting from them as well which is very nice uh, so there'll also be lots more videos coming out. So tomorrow will be the um, the update for Dyson Sphere program. So talking about Wednesday's stream. If you come along on Wednesday, there'll be a. Uh, if you come along on Monday, rather, we'll be carrying on with the stream for Factorio Space Exploration. Lots to do, as I've been talking about. And then on Wednesday will be the Dyson Sphere program stream. Uh, there was a video earlier in the week going talking about um, rocket launch. Uh, sorry, no, talking about spaceship automation in a bit more detail because apparently I rushed through it last time and uh, people couldn't quite keep up. So if you, if you found it was a bit much last time, or if you just didn't see it at all, that's a good one to check out tell you how to automating spaceships either with the logic inside or outside it can be done either way now um, or at least I've, I've now told talked about doing it either way it probably could have been done either way around all, all the way through <laughs> um, and we've got a big Factorio challenge coming up on the 15th of October so if you haven't signed up for that join the discord and tell everyone you want to be part of the Factorio rocket race uh, we're going to be using creative mod and some interesting rules in order to make a, an interesting race that we expect to take somewhere between an hour and two hours depending on how quickly you build uh, so that, that should be good fun. I recommend, I'd recommend. i say come along to that because I think it's going to be uh, very interesting. Um, and I'll try and make some more videos have them coming out here and there and everywhere. There's always, there's always something new going on on the channel. So, as ever, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>